Okay, guys, um, so today we're going to start reviewing inverse trig functions, and we're going to start by writing inverse functions of trig functions, and the reason we do this is because we use inverse uh, functions to solve. Okay, and that'll be the next thing that we get into is solving trig functions, including factoring and all that good stuff. Okay, so as a reminder, you write an inverse trig function the way you write any inverse function. Okay, the first thing you do is always swap x and y. Okay, why do we swap x and y? Because when we're talking about inverse functions, remember all the x's and y's change. So your domain and range basically swap out. Okay. So you have to swap the x and the y, just the variables, nothing else with them, and then you basically solve for y using inverse operations. Okay, so example that's a non-trig function, we have y equals 2x minus 3. Okay, so we swap the x and the y, so now we have x equals 2y minus 3. Okay, and we're basically going to solve for y, so we have to figure out what happened to the y. So you need to think about reading the function from the variable that you're trying to solve for. Okay, so if we're starting looking at the y, well, what's been done to the y? Okay, well, the first thing that was done to it was it was multiplied by 2, and then it was subtracted by 3. And when we are doing an inverse, we go in the opposite order as far as to undo it's like putting on your socks, then your shoes, then you have to take off your shoes and then your socks. You do them in reverse order, okay? So if subtracting 3 was the last thing done, then it's the first thing that we have to undo by adding 3. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. And what's going to happen is this minus 3 is going to cancel, right? Because negative 3 and positive 3 is 0. So those cancel, and we're left with x plus 3 equals 2y. Okay, so then the last operation we need to undo is multiplying by 2, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. Okay, and again, the 2's cancel on the right side, and we have y equals x plus 3 divided by 2, and then we're going to simplify this as much as we can. We're going to split it into two fractions. So the inverse function would actually be x over 2, which is 1 half x, you can write it as x over 2 if you want, um, plus 3 over 2. Okay, so and you have that choice as well when you're talking about the trig functions. When we did this the first time, I said you could leave it as all divided by 2, or you could realize that you're multiplying the whole function by 1 half, so you would know what your amplitude is. Okay, sorry, so let's try some trig functions. Okay, so the first one, go ahead and get it copied. And let's start talking about what's been done in order so that we can undo it. Okay, so y equals 3 sine 2x plus pi minus 4. So first step, swap x and y. So now we have x equals 3 sine 2y plus pi minus 4. So again, what has been done to the y, since that's what we're solving for, and it has to be in order. So we read the function from the y. Okay, so that's 2y multiplied by 2 plus pi. We added pi. And this is where people were getting a little stuck last time. The next step that you actually did is you took the sign of that whole parentheses. So we took the sign. Okay, then we multiplied by 3. Last thing is we subtracted 4. 
Okay, so again, multiplied by 2, add pi, take the sine, multiply by 3, subtract 4. Okay, so we have to undo them in reverse order, just like we did with the regular inverses. So the first thing we're going to do is add 4 to both sides. Okay, and if we add 4, you know what, what I'm going to do, there we go. If I'm going to add 4 to both sides, what I'm going to end up with is x plus 4 equals 3 sine of 2y plus pi. All right. So again, in reverse order. So we added 4 to both sides, took care of the 4. Okay, the next thing, the inverse of multiplying by 3, is I now need to divide by 3. Okay, so we can leave it as a fraction, or we can write it as two separate fractions. I'm going to go ahead and write it as two separate fractions. If I'm going to divide both sides by 3, then what that's going to give me is going to be 1 third x plus 4 thirds. So I have to divide both of these pieces right here by 3, plus 4 thirds. Okay, now equals sine of 2y plus pi. Okay, sine of 2y plus pi. Okay, so the next thing in order, again, we're going in reverse order, is we took the sine, okay? Took the sine of that whole parenthesis, so now I'm going to take the sine inverse of both sides. So the inverse of sine, literally, it's on your calculator, it's printed right above the signs, is sine to the negative 1. That's your sine inverse. And since I'm taking the sine inverse of both sides, I get sine inverse of 1 third x plus 4 thirds. So I'm grouping that now in parentheses because I am taking the sine of the actual whole thing. Okay. And if I take the sine inverse on the right side, then my sine cancels out. So now all I have left is 2i plus pi. Okay, very difficult to write with just your trackpad here. Okay, so next step, well, we added pi, so we have to undo. So now we're going to subtract pi on both sides. Okay, so now I have ooh, sine inverse k of 1 third x plus 4 thirds. Four thirds. Very hard to write this way. And then I add pi or subtract pi rather behind the parentheses because that's not part of our sign grouping. And now it equals 2y. Okay, last step that we have to undo, we multiplied by 2, so now we're going to divide everything by 2. And I am running out of room here, so I'm going to write it at the bottom. I'm going to divide everything by 2. So again, this is your choice. This is what I talked about the last time we did this. I could divide this whole side by 2 and make it one giant fraction. Or knowing that I probably need to write an amplitude, I'm going to go ahead and say that's the same thing as multiplying by a half. So I'm going to put a half here. So now I have an amplitude. Uh, sine inverse of negative 1, okay, of 1 third x plus 4 thirds, okay, ah, minus pi, and then we have our inverse function, so And that's the whole inverse. And keep in mind that remember that your domain and range swap. So if you were going to graph a normal sine function, your x values would be pi and your y values would be whole numbers, right? So if I'm doing an inverse function, 
Now my x values are all going to be whole numbers and my y values are going to be pi. So it makes sense that my vertical shift now is going to be in terms of pi and my horizontal shift, you know, my phase shift, is going to be in terms of regular numbers. Okay, so it does actually make sense because the domain and the range do swap. <clears throat> and that my period is also going to be in terms of whole numbers. Okay. So we're not going to have to graph them. That's the good news. Um, because I'm not expecting you to pick out the domain and the range for this if you're going to actually graph a period of it. Um, all I want you to be able to do is just write the inverse function. Okay? So lots of steps. Do them one at a time. We'll get through it. Got a couple more examples. All right. So let's try the next one. All right, so go ahead and get that one copied down. All right, so we've got y equals negative 3 sine x plus pi over 2 plus 5. Again, first step is always the swap. So x equals negative 3 sine y plus pi over 2. All right, and plus, that's supposed to be a 2. Try that again. X plus pi over 2 plus 5. Okay, so operations in order. Let's see what we got. Um, starting at the, oh, that's supposed to be a Y, not an X. So starting at the Y what has been done to it and in what order. So starting with the y. Okay, we add pi over 2. Good. All right, then what did we do? So you're starting with the y. So y plus pi over 2, we took the sine of that. Okay, and then we multiplied by negative 3. Okay, and then we added 5. Okay, same deal, we're going to undo them in reverse order. So we're first going to subtract 5 on both sides. All right, so now x. You know what? I'm going to type this because this is taking too long. x minus 5 okay, equals negative 3 sine. And y plus pi over 2. Okay, so we've subtracted 5. 
Now we're going to, since we multiplied by negative 3, we're now going to divide by negative 3. And again, I'm going to go ahead and write it as a fraction because I know I need that uh, pieces. So negative 1 third, right? That's going to be negative 1 third x. And if I'm dividing negative 5 by negative 3, it's now going to become positive 5 thirds. Okay, so equals sine of y plus pi divided by 2. Okay, so now I have to take the inverse sine because that is my inverse operation. So that means sine to the negative 1. That's showing our inverse. Okay, so sine negative 1. Sine negative 1 of, let's see, negative 1 third x plus 5 thirds equals y plus pi divided by 2. Oop, that's supposed to be a plus. Plus pi divided by 2. Okay, so next inverse operation, subtract pi over 2. And again, you just write the symbol. It's just easier for me to type it this way. Okay, so I'm going to subtract pi over 2 from both sides, and I should be done since that is my last, um, last operation that I have to take the inverse of. So sine negative 1 of negative 1 third x plus 5 thirds minus pi over 2, since that was my last operation. So, written nicely as far as the way you've probably got it. Let's see if I can get through it on this mouse pad. Alright, so negative 1 third x plus 5 thirds, close the parentheses, minus pi over 2. All right, so not too bad. Again, pretty um, standard as far as the operations you're going to do. You just have to remember to read the equation or read the function rather from the variable so that you can um, write the operations in order that you need them. Oh, don't forget the y equals. Very important. Okay. So, last example. Again, go ahead, write it down. Let's talk about what order the operations have been going on. All right, so do you already have it swapped, I hope? So our swap, x equals 1 half cosine 3y plus 1. Okay, so again, operations in order, starting from the y, multiplied by 3, took the cosine, 
multiplied by a half and then added one. Okay, so again, if you read it, 3y, the cosine of, times a half plus 1. Okay, so undo, subtract 1. Well, I'm not going to divide by a fraction. That's bad. We don't do that. So the opposite of mul multiplying by a half, don't forget, is to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply by 2. We're going to take the inverse cosine and then we're going to divide by 3 or since that is going to be my amplitude in the front I'm going to multiply by a third. All right so give you a minute two minutes try and see if you can write it and then I'll actually put the answer up to see if you've got it. All right, so hopefully you didn't get tricked by this. Oop, probably help if I put the one third in the front, wouldn't it? So y equals one third cosine inverse or inverse cosine, however you want to write it or state it. Okay, now here's the tricky part. It's two x minus two. Now, why is it two x minus two? Well, the first thing that you had to do was subtract 1, so that would have get, given you x minus 1, right? Okay, on the left side. Well, then you were supposed to multiply by 2 to get rid of that half on both sides. Okay, so if I distribute the 2 to both of these pieces so that I don't have some kind of weird double parentheses here after the cosine, that's going to be 2x minus 2. Okay, so then I took the inverse cosine and multiplied by a third. So we have y equals one-third inverse cosine of 2x minus 2. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. You need to, in your either your online or your textbook, your choice, it doesn't matter, uh, 581, pages 581 to 582. Now, pay attention because I don't want you to follow the directions in the book. I want you to take problems number 68, 71, 74, 75, 78, and 80, and I want you to write the inverse. That's all I want you to do. So don't pay attention to the directions because the directions are all about graphing. Um, for those of you using the online textbook, page 581 is the last part of chapter four. It's the review. So it is, did 
depending on how you're looking it up in the sections on that OA, OCAS, whatever it is. Um, I think if you go to chapter four, yeah, the summary review and test is um, the pages that it's on. So if you're looking for a section. Okay, so those six problems, and then take a picture and send it to me via Remind or via my email. Um, you have until, obviously, class tomorrow, unless you get stuck on something, and then you better be sending questions. All right, take it easy.